please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you and Shalom. Radiation from cellular phones, Wi-Fi boxes, and most of all the most dangerous cell phone towers are extremely dangerous for your bodies and the bodies of your children and your families. Please protect them all by getting these radiation protection stickers. They work. I've gotten them for many of my family members, friends, and even myself. I have radiation detectors that show that it removes all radiation, which causes cancer, defects in your DNA, and many other dangerous things. Please protect your families. To reverse the effects of this radiation poisoning that's happening, it's not a V-I-R-U-S, it's radiation. Lemons and limes are the best defense given by God himself to protect us. It boosts your immune system, gives you a bunch of alkaline, it protects, it even fights cancer. Protect your families, lemons and limes and radiation stickers. Enjoy the video. But most of all, pray intensely to God. Ask for protection from anything that is not His creation nor His will. Amen. In 1993, the FCC started a rulemaking to adopt the IEEE regulations on this issue. IEEE is an engineer association. Why is it that we adopt regulation of engineers who maybe know how to measure this radiation when it's passing a wall but not when it's passing a body? All our health agencies objected it, saying that it makes no sense to adopt engineer association that they had not even one biomedical person on their, on their team. They are effectively indemnified against adverse health impact lawsuits when the uh, acceptable limits are higher than the limits actually shown to show harmful health effects. The FCC guidelines were developed for short-term exposures, six minutes, 30 minutes, depending on it's a phone or an outdoor exposure, and they have absolutely no connection to the biological effects that have been very clearly summarized in the bio initiative. So as you can see, there's a number of individuals in this room today that have uh, serious concerns about this uh, as regards to their health. If uh, one of your companies decides to uh, put one of these small cells up at a pole that's within, say, 50 feet of one of their houses, what recourse do they have uh, to say, is there a way to move it somewhere else? Um, there, there's language in the bill so that the authority can require the applicant to come forth with certification of compliance with the FCC's rules related to radio frequency emission. Remember that denial of request or denial permit request that you can put in? It's going to point back to the acceptable levels as determined by the FCC. Not the EPA and not the CDC, the ones who usually take care of health concerns but by the FCC, which is staffed by former F, um, members of the telecommunication industry. That's the fox guarding the hen house. It's a fact that most insurance companies will not indemnify against EMF effects. Telecom companies around the world are warning their investors of potential major cost due to real or alleged risks of EMF pollution from their products. Interestingly enough, they're warning their investors, but they're not telling their customers. They're basically keeping it quiet because that's where their money comes from. So we're using technology that could be very potentially harmful to us, and the investors know it. But their only worry is that they might lose money, not that our health might be affected. First of all, I think that the, what you should really think about is why is it that they're not insured. It's not that they chose to be self-insured, they're actually rejected by the insurance company from being insured because they understand the risk. And so the insurance companies, the, the big insurance companies yeah, so will not okay. insure the telecommunication? So, okay. so there's insurance companies and then there's what's called secondary insurance companies. Secondary insurance companies are the insurance companies that insure the insurance companies. So in an event, an insurance company, let's say uh, I insure Verizon, and it may not be able to meet the claims, then the secondary insurance company is kicking in. Like Lloyd's uh, of London. Sorry? Like yes, Lloyd's of exactly. London. So two uh, leading one would be Lloyd's of London and Swiss Rare. Both told the insurance company not to insure the wireless industry, and this is why they're not insured. And that should give you a hint. Now, this is exactly why they have to prevent a uh, health in, uh, uh, lawsuit. And how do they prevent lawsuit? That goes back to Section 704.
Section 704 was passed in 1996. This is how our rights in regards to health were taken away by the wireless industry. What this legislation did, it gave the power to regulate the health effects of wireless technology to the FCC. FCC is a spectrum auctioning agency. It's not a health agency. They don't even have one biomedical person on their team. And then the other thing that Section 704 did, it actually took the power from the state to regulate location of cell towers based on health. And what does it mean? It means that if they want to put a cell tower in front of your home, you cannot go to your city council and say, hey, stop, I don't want it. I just heard in lecture that there are 10,000 studies proving that it's harmful. I don't want it. My child is sick. They would tell us, stop. You're not allowed to mention this in the city council because Section 704 says that if you will, and if the application will be rejected, the city will be sued, can be sued by the wireless industry. A major U.S. government study on rats finds a link between cell phones and cancer. Very first government study linking the radiation from cell phones to cancer. Two decade, $30 million federal study out today found there is some evidence of a link between cell phone radiation and brain cancer. Professor, what is the NDP? I've heard that study several times. NDP is what? So it's a $25 million study on the rats and mice that was supposed to demonstrate that there were no effects of radiation below thermal. And in fact, it demonstrated exactly the opposite. And it follows on the heels of two major studies on animals that said exactly the same thing. And that study was designed perfectly to make sure that it cannot be a challenge, that there will not be any doubt. That's why it took them 14 years. That's how they prevent a discussion of health. And why do they want to dis prevent discussion of health if there's no problem with health? Um, simply put, FCC is completely unprepared, unable, and possibly unwilling to oversee 5G for safety, even as it barrels toward us. They are falling back on tired definitions and panaceas long since disproven by science. To make matters worse, recent FCC rulings and numerous industry-friendly bills passed at state and federal levels between 2016 and 2018 removed the last vestiges of local and state review over infrastructure siting just when we need it the most. When those first studies were performed years and years ago, nobody knew about the importance of the microbiome, uh, the role of the microbiome and the immune system, and even less the role of the microbiota inside our brains, that is the microbes that are normally resident inside our brains, whose influence on brain function is nothing but immense. And you may think, well, who cares about the microbes? The less microbes we have, the better it is. Well, we, we know by now that this is not absolutely the case because microbes are truly essential for the development and function of all our organs and systems. Our immune system is based on the microbes we have in our gut. And our brain also has microbes that influence its function. In tests, it's been found things like mold. If you grow mold inside a Faraday cage, it'll grow one way, and then even if the electromagnetic fields are around, take the Faraday cage away, and some sort of 600 biotoxins are developed within the mold because of the effects of the EMFs upon it. Electromagnetic fields, even of weak quality, have an effect upon our microbiome, which is really essential to our whole being. This is going to eviscerate microbial DNA inside human beings, which is our effective operating system, number one. So it may not impact human DNA in laboratory experiments right now, and they're saying it doesn't impact human DNA. But given that human DNA is less than 1% of the cellular DNA in the human body, the rest of the cellular DNA is microbial, and we know that this will eviscerate microbial DNA. So we're talking about a takedown of the operating system of human beings. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't have put it better myself. John Brandt. Good morning, Mr. Brandt. Wow, my, uh, this is Amanda. From oh, hi, how are you? Hi, I've been trying to get a hold of you for months now. You guys are covering up chemtrails. No, we are not covering up. We have, we have no reason to cover up chemtrails. Of course you have every reason to cover it up. Every reason. Let's call what reasons your job. would that be? 
Oh, well, you personally, I'm, uh, you would lose your job if you were to, to reveal anything to me. And it's probably unsafe for you to even be speaking about this, considering no, the a, types <laughs> of individuals you work for. It's, it's not unsafe. There's, it is unsafe. There's no, can... no problem with us talking on, you know, you're a citizen, you're making a complaint. Oh, it's a complaint Lord, have mercy on myself. It's a complaint in an area that, that we, don't, uh, we don't have authority to regulate. So the connection between chemtrails and 5G? It's all interconnected. Uh, the metallized particulates uh, that would allow the 5G phase to race, so basically the radar that would allow it to be able to identify you, so it can watch you, it can identify you in your own home 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For the last X amount of years, we've been through chemtrailing, and that is now the cat is out of the box. We've had these nanoparticulates raining down on humanity for years now impregnating our bodies by best accounts staying inside our bodies those nanoparticulates what you're saying are creating a f building up a kind of a phosphorescence glow capability so that we can be flagged up in our homes behind concrete and steel inside bunkers in the basement doesn't matter where you are the 5G will be able to now triangulate, map and read you because you as a living being are impregnated with these nanoparticulates which are acting as a kind of transmission and reception technology. It's exactly, absolutely exactly. You have to consider that DNA also works as a fractal antenna which is able to send and receive and also to process signals under the form of radio frequencies, well then there is no doubt that artificial radio frequencies such as those of cell towers and in particular these new types of towers that have a much higher density of signals, they may somehow interfere with the ability of DNA to retain and transmit biological signals. So this is one level of danger that very few uh, biologists are aware of. How much effort was put forward to address this, uh, the other, the, what most of these people are, or many of these people are here for, which is other health concerns. Uh, was there any uh, dialogue back and forth? Was there any working, uh, was there many, many studies evaluated to look at regarding this area? Maybe um, not every person that has concerns in the legislation was brought to the table. Okay, so from your perspective, you feel that there was a legitimate amount of time to evaluate the data that the, uh, the opposition would have on this? Absolutely, and I, um, I wouldn't put forth something that I didn't believe in. Um, and I'll tell you, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and it's been commented several times amongst the panel here, this is truly an economic development issue. Our three-year-old, again at home, <laughs> is outraged when we pull out the driveway and he's not able to access Wi-Fi. I think anyone who puts Wi-Fi into a school should be locked up for the rest of their life. I really do. I think they're not fit to walk on the surface of this planet because they haven't looked at the research and whatever incentive they have, it is not worth the genetic problems that parents are going to face with their children when they're born. France has banned Wi-Fi in nursery schools and put warnings out for regular schools uh, because they're finding there's impaired learning capacity in children when they're around Wi-Fi. And they have to put up warning signs where they put Wi-Fi transmitters. Um, when I got sick and I learned that they're putting Wi-Fi in the schools in Israel, um, I was very sick at the time, but I could not tolerate the thought that children in the schools will become as sick as I have. And after a few months of uh, correspondence, I submitted a Supreme Court case in Israel to ban the use of Wi-Fi in the schools and replace them with wired network. The four top diseases that kill our children, our young adults right now, are brain tumors, thyroid cancer, testis cancer, rectal cancer, everywhere we put our cell phones. And a lot of our children are sick and they've been misdiagnosed and mistreated because the wireless industry has put billions and billions of dollars in the past 30 years to mislead the public as to the health effects and keep the public uninformed.
We are performing an experiment on children. We are exposing children to microwave radiation for six hours during every school day. We have had absolutely no studies looking at the long-term effects of this radiation on young people or even on adults. A considerable amount of research shows that developing brains and bodies of children are much more affected than adults. And there are clear indications of a link between increased electromagnetic fields and autism spectrum disorders. We took 10 autistic children and went back to the sleeping location where the mother was when she was pregnant with that child and compared it with the sleeping location of a mother that gave birth to healthy children. We had 10 mothers in that group, 10 mothers in this group, and in the group of the autistic children, we found that the, the measurements that we got for the microwave exposure was elevated compared to the group of children that were normal. The fetus is affected. The exposure to man-made electromagnetic fields has become the first factor that could be isolated ever in autism that could predict autism. The fifth generation of wireless technology, or 5G, as it's being rolled out worldwide without safety testing. Let me say that again, without safety testing. And how we've got scientists and doctors and environmental organizers saying, stop this. Because in terms of the effects of wireless radiation, the science is in. Wireless radiation can lead to cancerous heart tumors, uh, brain tumors, uh, DNA damage, Wireless radiation is linked to infertility, to autism, Alzheimer's, and more. And guess what? All the effects that I just listed, those are some of the effects that are known according to the technology that's being seen today. First of all, you have to know that we know that the other EMFs that we're exposed to are already known to be health risks. And, uh, and basically that 5G, because of the frequency that's going to be used, and because of the extraordinarily high pulsation levels that will be used uh, is uh, a much bigger threat to our health than the things that we already have, which are very substantial threats to our health. We're not just talking about the intensity. We're talking about the frequency and the very high level of pulsations. There's a huge literature which shows that pulsed EMFs, EMFs that pulse up and down very rapidly, are in most cases much more biologically active than our non-pulsed EMFs. Every single wireless communication device communicates via pulsations, but the industry completely ignores this issue. The problem with 5G is that they're planning to put out tens of millions of these antennae all over the place without doing one single biological safety test. Are you implying possibly that we, the consumers, are the guinea pigs since they haven't really done tests to see the effects in a smaller setting? I mean, that's not an implication, it's a statement. We are, yes. Cancer is not the main concern that I have. I'm really concerned about sperm count and about effects on pregnancy. How many of you know that one in six American couples is unable to have a child when they want to? How many of you know that last year the birth rate in this country dropped the most that it ever has in recent history? 3% in a single year. People look at the sperm in people use cell phones and the sperm, usually sperm swim and they swim straight. But if you expose them to radio frequency, uh, mobile phone uh, waves, they swim in circle. <laughs> Studies have been done here in Australia taking sperm from healthy men and one test tube gets exposed to cell phone radiation and one test tube is not exposed to mobile phone radiation. And then the results are evaluated. And this is a measure of vitality. We measure how well the sperm swim. This is a measure of mobility, motility. This is a measure of the mitochondrial DNA damage. They have three times as much damage on their DNA if they have been exposed to mobile phone radiation. The data on that are rock solid. Cell phones can damage sperm quantity and quality. Your embryo, your uterus in the fetus, where your child is developing for the first 100 days, in the ovaries, the eggs do not have that protection. So they are at maximum risk 
from radiation. And for the first month or so, you wouldn't even know you were pregnant. You wouldn't even be taking precautions. That is the main danger area. So you give birth to a daughter, but her ovaries are now contaminated. She may be normal, she may be genetically damaged, but her ovaries are at the most risk. So when your daughter grows up and she becomes pregnant and has a baby, this is where one of these eggs will be fertilized and come out. So the real damage here is your grandchildren. That is where it is going to show most. Do you think that there is a chance that within the third generation of females, they may be irreversibly sterile? Not in the third generation, but in the fifth generation, and that would for humans be something in the order of 150 years ahead of us. And of course, then it's too late to say that you are sorry, and it's very too late to say stop. There is a wealth of papers, I mean we're talking about thousands of published papers in the scientific literature, few of which or sometimes none of which have entered the official documentations from authorities and likewise. So I think it's really time to have an independent compilation of data. Such was done at August 31st, 2007 in the form of the Bioinitiative Report of which I was one of the authors. And then we put together approximately 2,000 scientific references on a little bit more than 600 pages, clearly saying that if you, for instance, if you are a rat or a mouse or a cell or a molecule, you should definitely not allow yourself to be exposed to this. And in the meantime, we have this full-scale experiment using our own kids. One interesting case, John Patterson, he was a telecommunications engineer in Sydney, Australia. Very brilliant man. For 20 years, John tested Telstra digital systems. Over the time, he realized the dangers of electromagnetic radiation. It disrupts the bioelectric system of your body, which is really your brain, your nervous system, how your muscles talk. And he tried warning of these effects through different agencies, through his company. Got all the test gear out and measured it and drew up a report. And uh, I was immediately removed from service. Finally, in um, 2007, he took matters into his own hand. He commandeered a used British Army tank and went and destroyed six cell phone towers in Sydney, Australia, because he wanted to stop this. He was trying to make a point. The message was that how dangerous it was. You know, these people were elected by us to manage our infrastructure in a responsible manner. That is the sole purpose of government if it's going to exist at all. And if it doesn't do that, then it has no right. It is invalid. So we need to pull this infrastructure down. We really do. But in order to do that, I mean, we can't just be some violent domestic terrorist. You've got to, you've got to bring this awareness to the people that these towers are doing them damage. You don't need bandwidth that fast. And they're not doing it so you can download movies quickly. They're doing it so they can track every single thing you do and bring in this social credit system to control even everything you think. There's a story about a lady called Claire Edwards. She was a United Nations staff member and she was warning of uh, the potentially uh, catastrophic uh, dangers of 5G technology. I took issue, or took the issue, to the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. He is a physicist and electrical engineer and lectured on telecommunication signals early in his career, yet asserted to me that he knew nothing about the dangers of 5G. Current public exposure levels are at least one quintillion, that's 18 zeros, one quintillion times above natural background radiation, according to Professor Ole Johansson of the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. The highly dangerous biological effects of EMFs have been documented by thousands of studies since 1932, indicating that we may be facing a global health catastrophe, orders of magnitude worse than those caused by tobacco and cigarettes. 5G is designed to deliver concentrated and focused electromagnetic radiation in excess of 100 times current levels in the same way as do directed energy weapons.
There is currently an international appeal signed by 237 EMF scientists from 41 nations urging the UN and particularly the WHO to exert strong leadership in fostering the development of more protective EMF guidelines, encouraging precautionary measures and educating the public about the considerable health risks, particularly the risks to children and fetal, fetal development. Sorry, because uh, we are talking with someone that is a little bit ignorant on these things. We are talking to the Wi-Fi systems. I become worried because I put those devices in my house. <laughs> I, this I will have to, I mean, I'm, I confess my ignorance on this. Uh, we will have to, uh, I, I, I'm go but I'm going to raise this with WHO, which I think is the organization that might be able to deal with it properly, because I must confess I was not aware of that danger. In 1996, when the Telecommunications Act was passed, in it was a provision essentially that kept local officials from addressing health issued concerns when approving or not approving a cell tower. So that's, that's but, correct. But then something new is happening. We've talked a lot about it on the Solari Report. Thanks to Jason Bob Smith and his website EMF Warriors. But but this is new. This is very very new. So you're you're basically you know, sending out an appeal on something that in one sense hasn't happened yet. This is not just an incremental change. This is a big step up. It's it's a sea change. Uh, an, an onslaught's not an improper word. It's, it's a bombardment. So instead of a cell tower one mile or two miles from you and you still have cell phone service, we're going to have antennas every block and some poor soul is going to have one mounted to utility, utility pole maybe less than 20 meters from their home. So this kind of you know invasive bombardment with this many antennas, I mean, just in one square mile, if you do the math, one per block and 16 blocks per mile, that's about 250 antennas per square mile. The millimeter wave is untested. Former FCC chairman Tom Wheeler openly said that they don't plan to test. We won't wait for the standards. And then our appeal also addresses the fact that there's a plan to roll out 5G through satellites in low Earth orbit. So 20,000 satellites, which will cover every square foot of the planet with a 5G signal. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Night after night, politicians and other leaders were telling Americans that Sputnik revealed that we were at great risk. Not just our pride, but our security is at stake. Russia wins dominance of this completely new area? Well, I think the consequences are fairly plain. Probable Soviet world domination. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Welcome, everybody, to the White House. This is uh, White House 5G Summit. My name is Justin Clark. I'm the Director of Public Liaison, and we are thrilled to have you here today. Really happy to be joined by a lot of leaders in industry, members of Congress and the Senate, uh, White House leaders on this, and uh, people from the FCC. Before we start, one, we are government, so don't assume we know anything, okay? I do agree, I don't know anything. I have become accustomed to giving speeches in my new position on subjects about which I frankly know very little. And we need more cell towers and connections in Connecticut, my home state. It's ridiculous. The U.S. is in the lead thanks to our private sector as well as the work of the FCC and this administration overall. But China and South Korea and many other countries are eager to claim this mantle. We have every intention to deploy 5G first and reap the benefits of faster and more robust wireless. Yes, I hope we beat China, of course, and get to giga, giga, gigabit speeds and low latency. And The race has begun. Let there be no mistake. The race to 5G is a sprint. Winning the global race to 5G, it's a national priority. We must bear in mind the national security implications of winning the race on 5G. Today we're talking about the importance of being first in 5G. Continued commitment 
to putting America first in the race to 5G. We're calling it America first, 5G first. Well, our strategy is called the 5G Fast Plan, a plan to facilitate America's superiority in 5G technology. Connected devices for health applications, which I love, has the capacity to make people healthier, as I understand it, a lot of medical applications. The industry is not asking the government for money to build 5G networks. They're asking us to cut the red tape that surrounds infrastructure deployment. We cannot let today's red tape strangle the 5G future. The red tape slows and sometimes stops the building of densified network facilities necessary for 5G. As we continue our efforts to keep government out of the way so that America can continue its leadership for America to win the race to 5G. One path is the government regulatory path. The other path is the private enterprise free market. Gales of creative destruction, Schumpeter path. You ever heard that? Gales of creative destruction? It just means let it rip. The new replaces the old. With 5G, we're on the cusp of another era of American innovation. It means an even more connected world for everyone around us, unlocking the potential of the Internet of Things to become safer, healthier, and more sustainable for our future. You know, sometimes, look, we all believe in the Tenth Amendment, but sometimes you have to override it. By the way, the 1996 bill permits that kind of override. We're not here to be uh, completely heavy-handed, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. And some of these states or cities that don't want to cooperate want to shake us down. We can't allow obstacles and barriers to stop this movement. That's all. And this happened in Canada. I mean, there were some activists I was working with up there that said, well, you know, we, we, we won a victory. We got the local, the Public Utilities Commission to allow us to opt out. And I said, boy, you, that's divide and conquer. They just got rid of the, the, the people that were raising hell. So, you know, that's not, a, that's not the answer. We need to opt out everybody. An opt out is an agreement to pay to not be harmed. An opt out is volunteering into extortion. An opt out says that if I don't pay you, you have the right to harm me. So that, that doesn't work. This is a mandate. This is being pushed down your throat by a company that is not responsive, by a government that is not responsible, and it's being done in a collusion that's designed to undermine the individual rights of individual people in communities across the country and around the world. The Minister for the Environment has a duty. His duty is primarily to ensure that there is cleaner, better, healthier environment for people in this country. It's a simple duty. He also has a responsibility in regard to science and innovation to make sure that that happens. What seems to be happening here, in fact one could say undoubtedly happening here, is he's using science and innovation to ensure that our right to life is threatened. There have been no public debates. There is no public discourse. There are no public disclosures as to why, when, how, what is going on in regard to 5G. That by itself is a breach of ministerial responsibility and one which we really should look at in terms of a private prosecution against the ministers who have failed to protect our right to life. Okay, smart, smart technology, smart meters, smart cars, not that smart, huh? What does smart mean? Anything that has smart attached to it, secret militarized armaments in residential technology. That's where smart came from. And smart, every bit of technology that you see today has all, all been developed for either some type of battlefield, some type of intelligence gathering system. And obviously these developments have to be commercialized and people have actually took them uh, into their homes the definition of a smart grid is a wireless system that will fundamentally turn every single appliance in your home into the equivalent of a transmitting cell phone. That's every, every computer, every television, every furnace, every air conditioner, every coffee machine, every printer. Every single appliance that you have in your house will eventually, in a smart grid, have an antenna that's embedded into it that will transmit your usage data to a smart meter on the outside of your home that will then transmit your usage data to another tower receiving that usage signal that will then go to the utility company for supposedly billing purposes. 
not all signals will just be about your individual use. There will be aggregate uh, meters that will bounce signal from house to house to house within a neighborhood that will then accumulate all of the usage data that will transmit that to the utility company. Now, what that will do is that the end metering system that is transmitting all of that data will be firing an RF signal at many, many times a second, which will increase the average homeowner's radio frequency radiation exposure exponentially. This picture shows some aphids on the leaf of an orange tree. Shortly after radar equipment was installed at a nearby airport a number of years ago, I noticed that every few seconds all the aphids would tense up in unison and do sort of a little dance as you see in the picture. Upon further investigation, I found that the interval of time between the activity of each dance coincided exactly with the rotation of the radar rotor device at the airport, which was a distance of approximately 14 miles. The antenna arrays create this steerable beam, which helps concentrate the energy. The, the beams get pointed at the user. What's a MIMO tank? Massive in, massive out. British government have got a plan to roll 400,000 out. This is so that you've got 5G in every nook and cranny, every part of the countryside, so that you can have autonomous tractors, believe it or not. However, those transmitters, these are radar. It is phase to rear radar. Though that radar signal sweeping the countryside will kill every pollinator, every biological structure, it will sterilize livestock, it will kill the ground, so consequently land won't have a value, uh, obviously farmers will die, the community will be under attack. The community will be under attack. If we can't produce food, if we kill all the pollinators, we're in serious trouble. The takeaway is that 5G, the trillion dollar rollout of 5G by our friendly local government, is definitely a weapon system masquerading as a modern efficiency technology. It most certainly is. And what I'll put it down to, it's economic terrorism. There is no value, nil, in killing off your population, in destroying your ability to grow food to kill all your pollinators. They may have a nice financial number on a piece of paper, but in reality, dementia, diabetes, all the things that are currently crippling the NHS, a burden on the country, illness, mental health issues, the, the, the focus of that cause can be identified and has been identified in the science. The science has proven the epidemiological data that was seen on the street is now substantiating that science. The DNA inside you, the mitochondrial DNA, you can trace unchanged to your mother, her mother, her mother, right the way back to the beginning of the human race in Africa, the Stone Age. It is unchanged, the mitochondria. And that is being unchanged in your children, which means if you damage it, your child could be genetically damaged, then her child, and her child, and her child, forever you are condemning the future generations of every single child. There is, however, a light uh, at the end of the tunnel, or there is uh, some ray of hope. Thanks uh, to the principles of biological quantum entanglement uh, that we have learned how to exploit in the field of biology and medicine, now we can transfer the information from the microbial DNA to the human DNA. And in so doing, we can train, so to speak, the microbes to withstand uh, whatever extreme condition they are exposed to, including this new technology. And then we can train them to transfer this resilience of theirs to our DNA. So let's say that uh, there are good reasons to be worried about uh, the introduction of these uh, new technologies, but fortunately, since the knowledge in the field of quantum biology, in the field of micro or microbiome medicine is advancing as fast as potentially harmful technology, then we can exploit this knowledge to protect ourselves from any 
real potential or perceived danger from these new technologies. I've met with uh, molecular and cellular biologists, with uh, blood microscopists, uh, with weapons development uh, experts, uh, frontline activists and researchers, and all the stories I'm hearing from these experts and pundits leads to the same thing. 5G is almost certainly the end game. It is an extinction event brought into our homes, into our classrooms, onto the high street, into the very cells and DNA in our human bodies. It is such a perilous threat that it is almost impossible to imagine, let alone describe. When the 5G signature goes live, it will tap into a multitude of satellites which are in geosat orbit around the surface of the Earth. Uh, millions of surface antennas will pick up uh, that signaling and will then uh, scatter the signaling into uh, hundreds and hundreds of millions of different micro antenna systems uh, set up on street lamps and even in your home, which you're not aware of incidentally. The LED light bulbs in your home invariably contain the micro or nanotech lens flare capacitors which will receive the 5G signaling and it will proliferate the 5G signaling everywhere by uh, exploding the signal into uh, billions of photons which will target everything all at the same time. This is stealth technology, this is invisible uh, science, but what it means in simple terms is that you will be flagged up, uh, visible, uh, trackable inside your own home, anywhere you move on the surface of the earth, they will have a lock and load tracking capability over you. You will be visible to invisible masters, each one of us, all the time. Today, our governments and uh, the corporate sector have managed somehow to infiltrate the mainframe of our civilization and are pushing through a $20 trillion infrastructural rollout without any, and I mean without any, health science running behind it. There have been no tests. Your government and your health authorities are either in collusion on this matter of genocide and ecocide, or they're just damned stupid, and I would suggest it is the latter. Shame on the technologists and the uh, electricians who are uh, furthering this technology in our homes, in our offices, in our streets. Shame on the legislators and the parliamentarians and the troglodytes and bureaucrats that proliferate our society today. Shame on that echelon for putting their signatures uh, to contracts which allow the fast tracking of this technology into our homes and onto our high streets. Shame on the parliamentarians and international leadership whose wet ink signatures and seals of office are sanctioning and permissioning uh, the rollout of something which is uh, arguably the greatest threat to humankind. Shame on each one of us who now fail to get up uh, out of our homes, walk out of our front doors and challenge every so-called authority who dares to violate our bodies, our homes and our future generations.